Celebrate the eighth Sunday in ordinary time, Yassi. This eighth Sunday of this year is so special that it ends the first part of ordinary time. You know, we have 34 Sundays, but after this eighth Sunday, we are going to begin the Lenten period. And therefore, this Sunday marks the end of the first period. But as the Sunday marks the end of the first period, it calls us in a special way and it reminds us that as Christians, we are always called to bear fruits and fruits that will last. Therefore, they are not, it is not reminding us of the fruits which are material, building, Paying the off, giving the offer tray, giving the tithe, building churches. No, those are not the fruits that we are called as Christians to bear, but the spiritual fruits which are seen in, in our actions and in our words. And in the real sense, the material fruits which we can do, even pagans can do them. Even people who have not heard about God, they can build churches. They can help the sick. Even people who have not heard about God, they can pay the tithe, they can pay the offertory. Maybe because it is a ceremony, everybody is doing it. Maybe out of humanity, they visit the sick, who are their relatives, maybe. But God tells us, always as Christians, bear fruits and fruits that will last. In a special way, the readings of today are calling upon us to once again look at the source of the fruits we are called to bear. In the gospel today, Jesus teaches us that the fruits which are, we, we are to bear, they come from the store of, of the heart, the treasure that you have in your heart. From that, the fruits that are going to be seen outside will come. And therefore, he who has a good treasure inside your heart will show and will bear good fruits. If you have filled your heart with kindness, with love, with concern for one another, surely you will bear fruits of love, of care. But those who have the treasure of evil filled with hate, filled with selfishness, filled with exploitation of the brothers, you will also bear fruits of the evil. As God tells us, from a good tree, we get good fruits. And from a bad tree, we have bad fruits. Like we cannot find a jackfruit that has grown on a mango tree, and therefore, there is no way you can say you are a good person, yet outside you are filled with acts that are evil, acts that are satanic. The first reading and the gospel, they are calling us in a special way to mend our hearts such that we can have a good treasure in our hearts such that we have a good store of good deeds in our hearts. The first reading acknowledges the store we have in, in our hearts, the treasure from which we get the actions and everything we do in our hearts, it acknowledges is going to be filled by the people we, we live with, by the words people speak, but the first reading is calling us, is, is cautioning us. 
when we are with our brothers let us allow them to speak let us give them chance to speak their minds to speak what is inside their hearts because when they speak we shall be able to know what kind of people they are we shall be able to to know what really they are whether they are good or they are bad for out of a good heart out of a good mind comes good actions comes good fruits this should help us to always recall the moments we have been in meetings we don't listen to some of our brothers as they are talking and you're like no 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 can we listen to so and so and say no what good thing would that one say the first reading today is telling us listen to them judge them by what they say and then we shall be able to say these are good people we should be next to them all they are bad people to be safe let us be far away from them if it is necessary secondly the gospel today calls us to self evaluation self examination jesus is questioning us can we look into our lives can we realize our faults our weaknesses such that we can then look at the weaknesses of other people can we take time to know and see what we are can we recollect ourselves can we repair the damage that is in us before we try to mend other people's damages can we remove the peck in our eyes before we remove a stick in our brother's eyes this reminds me a time when i visited a certain priest i entered his bedroom and in his bedroom he had a single chair the bed with a single chair without a table it was not facing a tv but it was just the understanding father what is the use of this chair and he laughed at me said hey hey kana mal every day i sit in that chair i try to recall what i have gone through during the course of the day i try to reflect on the good things i've done i judge myself for the times i've been rude i judge myself for the times i've not been kind enough and for the people where i have to say sorry i plan ahead like maybe when i meet this person again i'll have to say on this day i did this and i was, i'm sorry so that chair was a chair for self examination and this is a practice that each one of us should try at least every day before you sleep the tv is off the friends are away can we sit down and look down i packed at so and so was it right didn't i have a better way to do it in one way or the other during the day i i had to call to make a phone call to so and so did i make that phone call was it because i was lazy was it because i don't care so we judge ourselves such that by the time we look at other people and say you didn't do this you didn't do this we are also able to say oh but even myself i've fallen short in many things and above all we shall be able to collect others when we have collected ourselves the second reading today calls us to rejoice but this call to rejoice is a rejoicing in the lord for it says only in god can we rejoice because whatever we do here on earth will never be in vain it will never be in nothing if we do it in god sometimes we think of many things and the things which challenge us at times make us to think but when this happens will every good thing i've done come to nothing will i make no profit over whatever i will have done will i be a loser when this happens for example death when we think of death 
as humans we would say when death visits us everything is done we have no way to go we have lost the battle but the second reading is telling us in Jesus Christ we have the victory even amidst death for death is so strong the stench of death but in Jesus Christ we who would die we who are going to die in Christ we share on his immortality we who would perish we whose bodies at rot down we would say on death even our bodies we have been rejoicing with we have been enjoying with they will turn back to dust but in Jesus we share in his immortality and so in Jesus is our victory whatever we do we are sure it will not be in vain and in Christ even amidst these challenges which we do think would bring an end to us in Christ we still see a victory so the second reading summarizes today's themes as it says be steadfast be immovable such that whatever may come in this life be steadfast in Christ be immovable be staunch enough stand for the lord for in the lord we shall not do anything in vain and above all abound in doing god's work this god's work we should do in our words as we preach in our actions as we show what the gospel calls us to do but above all in our actions as we bear fruit the fruit that will prove to the world that indeed we are sons and daughters of god that indeed we are christians and not any christian but catholics the lord be with you oh, 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 oh. You have never lost a battle You have never lost a war Lord, you are able to do Exceedingly abundantly Far above we ask all things According to the power That work is enough